Welcome to the Net Zero. I am Barry Noise Berry. Ethiopia is vulnerable to the many effects of climate change, including increase in average temperatures and changes in precipitation. Ethiopia hopes to be climate neutral by the year 2025, overhauling its rural economy to support more of sustainable agriculture and regenerate degraded forests as part of the plan to achieve this. Today, Net Zero will speak with Dr. Thomas Torura Minda. As a scientist, researcher and leader, he is focused on monitoring and modeling weather and climate on complex topography and model-based quantification of the impact of weather and climate on the agricultural sector. Welcome Dr. Thomas. First question. As a mountainous country Ethiopia is, very sensitive to climate change, agriculture is the backbone of your economy. What climate change impacts are you seeing in Ethiopia already now? Our economy is really based on agriculture. Uh, it's rain-fed agriculture. And uh, agriculture shares 80% uh, of the employment and contributes 45% of the GDP. Ethiopia is experiencing one of the most severe uh, droughts. And for the last four years, the crops are failed. And because of this, 8 million uh, pastoralists and agro-pastoralists affected by the red droughts. 7.2 million people need uh, food assistance, 4.4 uh, million people need water assistance, nearly 2.1 million livestock has been died, and uh, 22 million livestock are at risk and are very weak. What are farmers doing to respond to these changes? The climate influence to the lowlands and to the highlands are different. Uh, during wet times, the lowlands are better. Uh, they, they produce, for example, maize. During drought times, the highlands produce potatoes. Such kind of uh, mutual uh, living system is, is, is common nowadays in Ethiopia. Some farmers also introduce like sorghum, cassava, which are also known as drought tolerant crops. And these are some of the mechanisms that farmers are, are exercising in Ethiopia in order to cope up with, with the changes they have been facing. You work to establish the Gamo Ethiopian Meteorological Station. How is this helping the situation? What we tried was to establish to uh, station networks in the highlands near to the farmers. And we have been monitoring the weather for the last six, seven years. And we have been intensifying the station network. So that is quality climate information that we are using um, in order to validate, calibrate crop models, agrometeorological models, hydrological models and also to validate weather uh, forecasting models. Ethiopia hopes to be climate neutral by the year 2025 and aims to regenerate jobs in the process. And the future climate may negatively influence your food insecurity and the environment. What actions do you believe must be taken by the leaders to ensure that the net zero goals are met and that communities continue to flourish? In Ethiopia, the concept of climate change should be integrated in the school curricula including higher education courses. So we need to teach the next generation why climate change is happening, how it's happening, and what's the impact of climate change. Not only that, the public in general should be trained so that awareness should be created regarding why climate is changing. And potential uh, adaptation and the mitigation measures should be communicated to the public. And we need to intensify, implement, climate adaptation and the mitigation efforts to our community, to our countries. Those things are, in my view, issues to be addressed through our leaders. What are your thoughts on Net Zero itself? Do you believe in the measures that were put in place by the IPCC to achieve the Net Zero objectives? Can these policies succeed by 2030? What solutions will you propose to achieve the Net Zero target, especially the LDCs? I am in favor of Net Zero uh, climate policy. That's my thought about net zero. Do you believe in the measures that were put in place by the IPCC to achieve the net zero objectives? Yes, I believe those measures are really applicable and I am in favor of them. Uh, can these policies succeed by 2030? No. The net zero policy, in my view, cannot be achieved by 2030. We need to implement sustainable energy sources because we have a lot of potential for renewable energy sources like hydropower, because we are mountainous country, so it's, it's very conducive for us to generate hydropower. Because we are in tropics, we have sufficient solar energy. Uh, we have sufficient wind energy. 
those potentials are not harvested so far. What message do you wish to pass along, especially to the young climate activists? The world leaders should be committed to their words. The commitments have to be implemented. As you know, climate change effects are uneven. Poor countries such as Ethiopia and the Sub-Saharan Africa, they are vulnerable to climate change. And their contribution to climate change is small as compared to the developed world. So in this regard, the least developed countries should be supported in order to meet the net zero commitment. Because without partnership, without joint, without collaborations, we cannot tackle climate issues, climate problems. Thank you for your time and perspective today, Dr. Thomas Tururaminda. This is Barry Nyoide Berry. I add my voice to the voices of my Net Zero International Youth Peers to monitor the actions of our world leaders to achieve their Net Zero Goal commitments. Together, we can achieve Net Zero. <laughs>